does a recession mean housing crisis? I say absolutely not necessarily so. Hey, I'm Scott. And I'm Lane. And today we're going to be talking about the correlations, or lack thereof, between a recession and a housing crisis. And as we look into this and dive deeper into this topic, there's always two ways to look at it. One is looking at the stats, the data, the graph, historically and as leading indicators. And then number two, just boots on the ground. What do Lane and I see as full-time real estate professionals out there every day? Lane, you want to take off? Sure. Let's talk about a recession. A recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. GDP growth. That does not mean that housing prices are falling off the face of the earth. In fact, if we look at three out of the last five recessions, homes actually appreciated in value during three out of the last five. And the two that they went down, okay, we went down 1.9% in 91. So basically, nothing. Nothing. It basically stayed a flat. It's a blip. Yeah. It was a blip. And then obviously the last one that we all know about, 2008, it went down almost 20% during that time of the, of the recession. Now, a lot of people will say that would be a real estate related recession or a subprime mortgage crisis where people were giving out these faulty loans and there was a lot of thievery going on in the industry there between the lenders and, and all that. But that was a real estate related recession. The next one that we're going into, you have to ask yourself, is it going to be a real estate related recession? And we pretty much think the answer is no with that. Let's look at the state of real estate right now. And again, Lane's going to be more accurate with this. But for the most part, the last bit of information we have is that upwards of 40% of the people in the United States don't even have a mortgage on their property. And the vast majority of those that do have a mortgage have upwards of 75% loan to value or lower than 75% loan to value, meaning they only are leveraged about 25% or less. Those things are insulating factors, in my opinion, which means even if there was a little bit of a blip and things went down a little bit, there's not going to be a jump into the market to sell and get out. There's not people going to be jumping ship. There's not going to be a mass foreclosure situation. Yeah, and I'm looking at two different things. I'm looking at buyers versus sellers, okay? So right now, we are sensing a little bit of a shift in the market, but does a shift mean that fall off the face of the earth in the market? The answer is no. What I mean by shift, and we'll start with the buyers, are their criteria shifting a little bit. Maybe they're looking at it, maybe they're opening up to different locations or they're looking at different loan products the fact of the matter is we haven't lost any buyers. All of our buyers are still willing to buy. They're just shifting what their, what their plans are because obviously prices are up, mortgage interest rates are up, and the buyer affordability is down, but they're not getting out of the market. They're staying in the market, they're shifting, and they're figuring out what to do uh, and, and work with the shift instead of against the shift. Okay, time out, Lane. But I have a question for our viewers. Let's get back to the question at hand, which is the recession. So we've got to talk about the recession first, I think, and say, are we headed to a recession? Is there going to be a recession? And if so... What's well, gonna early, do, right? indica early indication would be like if we were going to head into a, um, well, a recession, we might be heading into a yeah, recession. Yeah. But it doesn't mean housing crisis. Correct. Okay. I, I, so, I, see, I, see yeah. where I see where you're going. Okay. Okay. Great, so so if, if buyers were pulling out altogether and they're waiting on the sidelines, m yes, maybe. Right. So, yeah, I hear you. but a lot of our buyers aren't, they're just shifting. They're shifting. So right. I don't think that we're going to lose that much and we're going to have this crazy uh, real uh, housing crisis. I think you're right. And if we look at some of the underlying factors, and again, this is just from the boots on the ground, our last few open houses that I've had, I have the same, you know, kind of pool of buyers coming into the open house, young folks just like Lane starting their families. There's no shortage of people that have dual incomes that even with a recession, their jobs are going to be secure. Yes, maybe, you know, inflation has caused their affordability factors to change a little bit. Interest rates are rising. That's changing affordability, but there's no lack in demand. These folks want to start their families. They want to get into their first home. They don't want to wait for the next perceived cycle or downturn. They're ready to go now. And what I'm seeing is they're already adjusting, no pun intended, to the fact that adjustable rate mortgages are back. I had a dozen people that I've talked to over the last week and that say, hey, we're pre-approved. We've, we've got a fix for seven or a fix for 10 adjustable rate mortgage. We understand the terms. We understand the rates. We're very happy with that because we're going to get into a home and we're either going to be moving in seven years upwards we're confident that rates will come down and we'll refinance. But the bottom line is we're not going to be stuck in a 30-year mortgage at a rate we can't afford. So the motivation is there. Yeah. And, and so we still have demand, but a huge issue too that we're going to be facing, we're still going to be facing a lack of supply issue. Yes. You know, right now uh, we're still at a 1.3 month supply of inventory, which basically means if there were no new listings that hit the market, how long would it take to sell off the existing supply? And it'd be less than a month and a half. 
Now, historically, four months is considered neutral. Well, neither it favors the buyers, neither favors the sellers. Anything under four is considered a seller's market. We're at 1.3. Now, granted, the low maybe a few months ago was 0.7, so we're almost double from where we are, but we can handle that. We can handle almost twice of where we're at today. So we do need more homes to still come to the market to meet our current demand. We still have a high current demand, so we're going to have a supply issue still. And a lot of economists are saying that real estate is actually going to be what's going to get us out of the, re of the recession uh, quicker because real estate is still providing a lot of jobs, whether it's in construction, real estate sales, mm -hmm. development, investing, all of the trades out there with your plumbers and your electricians. If you talk to any of them or call any of them, they're busier now than ever. And so real estate, that, like, real estate is still going to be strong. Um, because of a lack of supply, because there's still going to be a demand there. And it yeah. might be one of the reasons why it helps get us out of the recession. Lane's got a great point. And I do pose a question to any of those folks watching out here today. How easy is it for you to get a handyman, a contractor to come work on your property or to work on something on your home? If you like me, it's near impossible. Now, if some of those numbers and stats go over your head, I'm so grateful they, it's intuitive for Lane, but some of it just kind of buzzes right over me. I just think about what I see when I'm driving around our Orange County marketplace where we live, work, and have made our homes for our entire lives. And that's that there's no more land left. When you see new building going on, what is it? It's what I call one of these little beehive apartment complexes that just goes up four to seven stories. Those are apartments. They're not single family homes. They're not condominiums. And once in a while, you'll see a little infill project where maybe there was a parcel of land, a half acre or something like that. They'll cram seven townhomes into that. But as far as building subdivisions and single family homes, our land is virtually gone here in Southern California with the exception of a few spots left by the Irvine Company and the Rancho Mission Viejo Company. And lastly, with regards to this, let's dispel a myth. There's not mass exodus away from Southern California. For all our problems, all of our issues, we still have fantastic weather. We have a diversity of jobs. We have great education. People want to live here, also take advantage of our climate. So again, when we see that, there's going to be plenty of people, still a shortage of housing. Yep. So in quickly recapping, Real estate and a recession, they do not necessarily have to correlate. So just because there's a recession coming doesn't mean that there's going to a housing crisis coming. So for those of you on the sidelines, I've been talking to a lot of buyers. They're saying they're going to wait for the recession before they jump in because they're going to wait for prices to go down. That not necessarily will happen because, in fact, three out of the last five recession prices went up. Yeah. And in closing, what I'd like to just say again, having been on the planet, you know, in real estate actually longer than Lane's been on the planet is, Look at your life's trajectory. Is it time to turn the page to start a new chapter? If all the things work in your favor to be able to do that right now, it may not be what you perceive as the perfect time, but it's the right time of you to move on with your life. You want to do that. You don't want to, as Lane said, sit on the sidelines and let life pass you by waiting for something that may or may not ever happen. What are you hearing? What are your thoughts? We'd love to hear from you. And if you found something of value that think, hey, I know somebody that could uh, learn from this, please share it. That's the best thing you can do for us to show us your love. And we'll hopefully be back with another relevant video for you. Thanks for watching.